is actually the rainbow towards Lucifer, and it has a lot of occult symbolism itself. Uh, so basically, Luciferian, the, 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 these, these cults are a myriad of various uh, secret societies that I commonly refer to as, of course, the Illuminati network. And uh, uh, this is probably the easiest way to call them. But they are all part of this destroying the Christian values, destroying the values of uh, Christianity to then be able to promote uh, everything that they are doing these days, uh, which is, of course, uh, unheard of a hundred years ago. I mean, if a pope uh, like this will come to America a hundred years ago, I think they will throw stones at him or maybe they will shoot him because, I mean, it would be just uh, uh, too much, uh, you know, for, for the real Christians to see that. But people have been made gradually to believe that this pope is some kind of supernatural being, that everything he says is good. In reality, it comes from a philosophy that has been preparing itself for the takeover for at least 500 years. Well, I got to so, tell you, I saw some of your speeches. I even read one of your books about five, six years ago, and I thought, there's no way the Vatican has this much power. There's no way the elite want to put it all in one organization. But they're basically, it already had a lot of power. They transferred a lot of power to it as an organization so they could hide it. And then now they've fully overthrown even that organization. And it's pretty much a dictatorship of whoever controls Pope Francis. We're going to go to break. We have a phone system problem today. Only three of our phone lines are working. Will, Nick, and Dan will get to you and then others can call in. Uh, Nick's listening on WAAM 1600 uh, in Tennessee. Will is uh, listening via Infowars.com uh, and more. Dan, stay there. We'll be back in 70 seconds with the third hour. Leo Zagano will be with us for 20 minutes to take your call. I had Jakari Jackson on yesterday from Philadelphia, and he said, you know, have you heard? The Pope said that Christ failed at the cross. And I believe Jakari. He never... Guy's so Christian, so professional, so nice. It, it's it's like Clark Kent or something, a black Clark Kent. And I said, the Pope said that Christ fell on the cross. Really, Zakari during a break? He goes, yeah, he did. You can find the clip. And we went and found it. But I still just can't believe it because it, it, it's just so ridiculously the attack on Christendom itself. I mean, if I had to think of one thing someone who's anti-Christian would do, it would be attack Christ on the cross. And I, I got to tell you, a few things scare me, but a man as powerful as the Pope with a billion plus followers, to actually see it, it it's so devilish, it actually shakes me to my core. I want to go to Will, Nick, Dan, Jim, and Sherry in that order. Uh, I don't like to admit things shake me, but I'm actually shaken by this Pope, uh, Mr. Zagami. It is uh, really apocalyptic, the scenario we are living. And in fact, it's very symbolical, actually, that Obama, maybe the only true thing he, he said today at the United Nations was that ISIS is a apocalyptic cult because uh, these uh, groups are made to create the more chaos possible, to uh, foment evil, destruction, so something will come out of it because they are trying by doing this to hush up the Antichrist and the coming uh, back of Jesus. This is at least uh, what uh, it seems uh, from, uh, fr from what they're doing and also from what a lot of researchers have been saying. Today and in the last few days we had this uh, particular conjunction of planets. Uh, a lot of people have been talking about it, the blood moon, the red moon, a lot of people have said, the, what is, why is the occult elite doing all this uh, with this particular con conjunction? Well, the elite follows always astronomy. We were talking the other time with you, Alex, uh, about uh, the Jesuits and astronomy. They are not looking to astronomy, the Jesuits in their observatories, to see some alien creature arriving with his, uh, uh, you know, machine, or whatever. Uh, they are actually um, identifying the planets, the stars, so they know when the right conjunctions are in place, they can hush up things in a certain way. This is what they really do. With astronomy. I want to talk more about that after calls because exactly, I don't believe in it. You don't believe in it. They do. That's why it's important. Uh, let's go to Will in Rhode Island. You're on there with Leo Zagami. Go ahead. Yeah, my question is for both of you gentlemen. I was just curious at what point do you think that uh, the Vatican and Christianity became corrupted? Was it during the Middle Ages, Constantine? Or do you guys think that Christianity? 
with some of the contradictions in the New Testament and the fact that the Gospels were written maybe hundreds of years after is just a concoction to kind of mislead us like the government. Well, Christ existed. The Romans and Jewish historians wrote about him. There's different perspectives in the three Gospels inspired by God. Uh, and Christ said there's going to be a lot of people trying to deceive you, so, you know, go with your spirit and, 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 you know, work through that. But I think whether it's the Orthodox Church or the Catholic Church, there's been good, there's been bad because we're humans. It's been a manifestation, and it's a larger part of God's plan, and I don't think we can fully understand it. Leo? Well, the Vatican has had problems since the beginning. In fact, uh, uh, it was actually St. Benedict who walked away from Rome, escaped here in the mountains uh, where I'm transmitting from, so he could found uh, mod uh, what became monasticism uh, because he founded his first monastery to escape the corruption in Rome. And this was uh, basically a long time ago. I mean, we're talking about 400... Uh, well, sure, look where they built the Vatican. Explain that to people. When we, uh, I mean, it's built on a serious serious cultic site. Sure, they, what they did basically, they just picked up the religion that preceded Christianity and they absorbed them in one great cult. That's why they're so powerful. But at the same time, um, the people who put together this whole machine that became known after as the Vatican and even uh, Constantine who gave birth to Christianity knew that these underground pagan cults, some of the most, uh, you know, evil ones dedicated to gods that were really from ancient times like uh, the modern christians called satan or lucifer stay there but let's talk about it when we come back good call leo zagami is our guest after he leaves us at the bottom of the hour i'll get into all the other incredibly important world news economic news political news science news it's amazing i haven't gotten to about about half of it yet we're going to go to Nick, Dan, Jim, Sherry, Robert, and others. Now that the phone lines are up and working here in just a moment. Leo Zagami's book is available in English. You can find it on Amazon, you name it. Uh, the Last Pope, Leo Zagami. He's written 11 other books as well. And he has accurately predicted exactly what would happen. That they would have the Pope resign, that they would put a Jesuit in. They never had a Pope resign. And this was a takeover. And he lives right there in Italy. He's been working inside the Vatican for decades. He's been part of secret societies that are within the Vatican. And it's just unprecedented. This is the big sign that world government's coming in. Last night, I went out with friends downtown to a pool, buy some condos to barbecue and see the blood moon. There was too many clouds to really see it. But I've seen one of the others this year. It's pretty spectacular. A full eclipse of the moon. Yeah, five in one year. Won't even see another one until 2033. But waiting for it to happen, I had folks out there who I didn't know at the pool arguing with me saying, no, it's Jewish mysticism. It's the, you know, maybe the end of the world, the start of the tribulation. I had folks on the elevator arguing with me. And, and of course, I have the news blaming me saying I said the blood moons were the end of the world, the Shemitah. I never said any of that. Just like I never said... Um, Jade Helm was the end of America or gun confiscation. It was further conditioning, like TSA on the streets. But this is how they lie and misrepresent. But I got to tell you, I've been on air 20 years. I've never seen the media lie like they lie now. I mean, they will really lie. They'll get up on the news and say, everyone loves the Pope. He's not political. People shouldn't criticize him. Just lockstep both parties. When the truth is, most Catholics I talk to are, are, are horrified. Are horrified. But, but now is it okay to say Christ failure on the cross? Now is that okay? I want to go back to your calls with Mr. Zagami. Nick in Tennessee, you're on the air. Go ahead. Um, hey, Leo. Uh, I was wanting to know your thoughts on the question, did the Roman Empire never fall and just became the Vatican? Thanks. I think I partly answered this question before because it definitely it is uh, like the listener said, and a continuation of the Roman Empire that then became the sacred Roman Empire. But in any case, the Vatican has kept that core of knowledge that was there since the ancient times, since the times even Julius Caesar got together with Cleopatra. I mean, Rome has this occult knowledge and the Jesuits make it really clear. Uh, I wrote an article about it for Infowars called um, describing Jesuitenberg, these caves near the city of Maastricht uh, built by Jesuits, which uh, basically include a variety of gods from all the traditions. 
worshipped by the Jesuits in their spare time. Uh, it took a hundred years to build these caves, and what is inside there is much more astonishing than any lodge you can find around the world. I mean, it's incredible. The imagery, the detail, and everything was done by the Jesuits who conducted until 1960 uh, rituals in these caves. And now are, it's possible to visit them if you book. Uh, sure, let me try to answer that pass. question for Nick. Uh, after the official fall of Rome and the final sacking in 410 by the Visigoth chieftain Alaric, Rome then switched, because it had been the Eastern and Western Empire, switched totally to Constantinople, uh, which is now Istanbul today, in Turkey, and the church gave its allegiance and vice versa to the Byzantines. In 800, with the crowning of Charlemagne by the Pope, and the ancient Roman term Europa, or the goddess Europa, then Rome gave its power to Europa, or Europe, and that's the switch, and then the rebirth truly of the Roman Empire under the Holy Roman Empire. Correct, Leo Zagami? Correct that we go into the 1950s and we arrive basically to the Treaty of Rome and to the modern European Union. Uh, that is an emanation of this uh, sacred Roman Empire. Which is a project of the Catholic Church post-World War II. And this project uh, wants to amplify itself, uh, of course, taking over also the U.S., uh, the rest of the world, and this uh, one-world uh, government. That, and since uh, you've been in the in the in the what you call the light side of the Illuminati in the Vatican, which there's all these Illuminati systems around the world, but you're you're confirmed in that the photos, the the admissions. I mean, they admit that you've been part of their group because of family ties. You believe it was for good for the light. You found it was bad, went public, so people can't judge you. There is supposedly the whole Rosicrucian, Merovingian, secret Atlantis breeding programs of the Masons uh, and George Washington and all the rest of them to get over here and to get away from the Vatican that they believe had corrupted the ultimate gain uh, to, 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 to empower humanity and that they were the real Illuminati led by Thomas Jefferson, who then, of course, helped engineer the French Revolution and all that mass murder, but he then turned against it and said it was wrong. Washington fought it from the beginning. Uh, so, so what about the new Atlantis versus Rome? Has it the new Atlantis, America, and uh, the goddess Columbia, hasn't that been at odds with the Vatican and Europa, two different cults, or is it really the same cult? Well, uh, as you know, the Jesuits uh, came around uh, more or less 500 years ago with Ignazio Loyola, and their uh, the whole uh, uh, reason to be, to be the Jesuits was to actually infiltrate the growing uh, dissent for the Catholic Church, uh, what became known as Protestantism. Uh, all those people who thought they were rebelling, in the end, they will be infiltrated. And uh, one thing about the Jesuits, they don't infiltrate uh, a cult, a religion, to deactivate it. They simply take it over. And, and so they, I mean, they take over uh, maybe the Christian evangelical church as they take over the satanic one. For them, the important thing is to take over every single human creed. That's right. But separately, a lot of Protestants don't know that the Rosicrucians and other people were there deeply was, was behind creating the whole Protestant movement. And, and it looks yeah. like there was a battle against the Catholic Church at one point, which they would say was evil. And then the Jesuits didn't go try to defeat that to save the Catholic Church. They actually took it over and then took over the Catholic Church and now want to control both wings of the system. They also infiltrated the Rosicrucians. The Rosicrucians were actually good at one point when some of them also devised, you know, based on the New Atlantis of Sir Francis Bacon, the idea also that came into life with 1776 with the foundation of the United States of America, this idea of freedom from the other side, uh, you know. From exactly, Europe. but George Washington smelled it out, double-crossed the Illuminati, and that's why America got, at least uh, for about 100 years, it shot. Yeah, and the chaos uh, was, of course, created the moment you rebel to this system. But they are always in the midst, you see, and they manage uh, the Rosicrucian tradition. At one point, Elias Ashmore, who was uh, uh, in the 16th century, well, one of the maximum representatives, he said that these uh, Rosicrucians were getting infiltrated by witch doctors, by witchcraft, 
And this witchcraft came from the Jesuits, you know. They went basically to those uh, true Christian mystics that wanted the something that brought them closer to God and offered them instead a diabolical creed